Containers are hugely popular nowadays, and creating container images is a common task. But are we doing it right when it comes to continuous integration? Hello everyone, and welcome back to Coder Dave. Today, I want to talk about containers and containers images, but I want to do that in the context of continuous integration. When it comes to container images, um, the, I think, pretty common and well-accepted way to create a container image is having a Docker file with multiple stages inside. That means that you will have, for example, a section of your Docker file that takes care of building and probably testing your application, and another stage which actually package your application into your container image. This is a very common approach, and if you look for it in Google or any other search engine, this is the result you will have, a multi-stage Docker file. This approach has, of course, its own benefits. Um, the biggest one being the fact that no matter where you build your image, the result should be 100% the same. And in fact, when I started my container journey, I've used this everywhere, on my dev machine and in the CI system. But after a while, I started asking myself, is this actually the right way to do CI for containers? And the reason why I, I had this question in mind is that it seemed a little too rigid. In a CI system, in fact, you usually not only build and test your applications, but you scan them for vulnerabilities, you want to see if there is any security issue, etc. And you probably use some plugin for your CI system of choice, in my case is Azure Pipeline, to connect some third-party systems like White Source or Sonic Cloud. While it is possible to run some of those tools during your container image creation, it is just not possible doing so for all of them. This is why I like another approach better. What I usually do, in fact, is building and testing my application before and only then creating the image. In this way, I can put inside here whatever other operation I want, whether it's an external plugin, whether it's a bash script, or anything I like to execute. For being able to do so, of course, I create another Docker file, like you can see in here. And all I do in this Docker file is actually copying the output of the build in the CI inside the container image. Of course, for grabbing that, I need to customize my CI. And you can see in here that my publish is actually publishing to the output folder. And this output folder is exactly the same I have in my Docker file. Again, if we go back to the Docker file, you can see here that I'm copying the output directory slash out from my CI to the work there of my container image. So this is how I like to create my container images in my CI system. Now, I'm not saying it's necessarily a best practice, but at least it gives me the flexibility I need for executing other comments, operation, and tools uh, in my pipeline. What do you think? Do you like my approach? Or do you prefer sticking with the traditional way that gives you full uh, consistency across different environments and across the board? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. See you soon at Coder Dave.